kind of crazy. Like it's prep week. Can you believe it's here? Like did, when you first applied, didn't it seem like it was like you had so much time? So Aisha's starting weight is 257. Paula, 183.4. Jen R, 187.8. Kayla, 149.4. Sarah, 238.3. Janine 210, Kristen 330, Melissa 223.4, Jennifer 205.2, Crystal 129. And so that is where you guys are starting. It's where you're starting. But it is obviously not where you're staying. And so before we get into the nitty gritty, um, Here's what I want to say to all of you guys. And I talked to you about this a little bit last week, but I want to re-emphasize it because unfortunately, the fluffy community, the fluffy population, those of us that have struggled with our weight, there comes a secrecy. We are secret about sizes, we're secret about eating, we're secret about struggling. Like there's a secrecy and a protection that goes along with struggling with our weight, especially those of us that have struggled for a while and that have struggled significantly with it. And it's something that the people that haven't struggled will never understand. Like my husband has never really struggled with his weight. And when he hears me talk about eating, and shoving a wrapper to the bottom of the trash can, like he's like, what? When he hears about me taking a bite of something and so I stopped chewing when someone would walk in the room, you know, that secret lick, and then someone walks in the room and you're like, you just stopped chewing. He's like, okay, going through the drive through on the way home and not telling anybody and then coming home and still eating a full dinner. Like he does not, cutting the tags out of my clothes because I didn't want anybody to see the size 22 and then blaming it on the fact that I didn't like the tags, uh, being in denial about my health, all those things he will never fully understand because he's never struggled with his weight. But what comes with that, because we know we're keeping secrets is shame. And for most of us, we have allowed ourselves to live with shame for far too long. And so that band-aid has to get ripped off. You are doing something very public, obviously. <laughs> but, but what I have seen is some people will still try and hide it. They'll still try and hide the fact that they're doing something public. They'll still try and hide that they're doing, listen, you're never going to get to where you want to go by hating where you're at. Hating where you're at and depreciating your body is a habit that has nothing to do with your size. If you hate the reflection in your mirror, if you hate, you're never gonna have a perfect body. Newsflash, we're all freaking aging. For those of you that have had kids and had stuff stretched out and sucked on and all that wonderful BS. I mean, it's amazing, you know. But you know what I'm saying? Like stuff gets stretched. We are all in an aging vessel is my point. And if you look in the mirror right now and the first thing you see is what you don't like. And the first thing you see is the flat or the fluff. I don't like the word fat. You're going to hear me say fluff a lot. If the first thing you see is your cellulite, if the first thing you see is your dangly skin right here, if the first thing you low do is look at your thighs and go, oh, thunder thighs, dun, 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 dun. If those are the comments you make to yourself now, most people think they would, if I just lost the weight, Carmen, then I would be confident. No, you wouldn't. Because it's, it's a habit of how you think. It's a habit of how you see yourself. How many of you have ever saw somebody that was small and you saw them still complaining about their body? Any of y'all ever seen this happen? And you're literally, I can remember the first, I can remember being with some people. And, you know, do they have perfect bodies? No, but to my morbidly obese eyeballs, they were nearly perfect. And having them complain about how fat they were or having them complain about their butt and their 
this and that. And I'm looking at them going, what the are you talking about? Like, have you not looked in the mirror, honey? Like, hello? Like, look at me. If so, so like, I, but this is the thing. Loving yourself has to start right where you're at. And you can love yourself while you're becoming somebody else. You can love where you're at while you're moving to someplace else. Loving where you're at doesn't mean that you're staying. Loving who you are. Let me say that. Not loving where you're at. Loving who you are. Because that number on the scale has nothing to do with who you are. It has nothing to do with your worth. And here's the thing about success in any area. Success only makes you more of who you are. So if you're a jerk now and you become skinny, guess what? It's just going to make you a bigger jerk. Because success only makes you more of who you are. But right now, if you are nice and you've got a good heart, I've heard people say, well, I don't want to become one of those. Oh, gosh, I don't want to lose weight and become one of those, you know, those wenchy broads. Well, are you wenchy now? That's my question. If you're not wenchy now, then how are you just going to become somebody else? No, there are wenchy skinny broads and there are wenchy fluffy broads right? Like they come in all different shapes and sizes. And so having success with your health only makes you more of who you are. And so if you're a nice broad on the inside and you care about people and you care about kindness and you value how other people feel, you getting to your goal is only going to make you more of that. All my relationships are better. Why? Because when I was fluffy, there was this whole part of me I wouldn't talk about. I didn't want to talk about my struggles with my friends. I didn't want to talk about my weight. I mean, no joke. To most of the people in my life, I just pretended like it didn't exist. I didn't talk about where I shopped. I didn't advertise the fact that I wore Spanx. I didn't lie about it, but I certainly didn't like they were, you know, when I did laundry, I made sure I folded my laundry because I didn't want anybody else to see the size of my pants or my Spanx. So there was this part of me that I protected that I wouldn't share with the rest of the world, that I wouldn't share with the closest people to me. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is, you know, this whole weight loss thing, would you do it all over again? And that question only always baffles me because the answer is hands down all day, every day, no question. There is no thing, nothing, not even one thing that was better about the old life than the new life. Not one thing. Actually, there is one thing. I used, I used less sunscreen. <laughs> when you have smaller bathing suits, <laughs> I swear I use more sunscreen, even though there's less of me. I'm like, man, you got to spray so much more. <laughs> oh, something's got to suck. But my point is, there is nothing about that old life. So for those of you that have convinced yourself that you don't know if you can be happy, that you don't know if you'll be accepted, that you don't know if people will judge you and you're somehow made up this fear of being skinny or fit or smaller. <laughs> for some of you, that's why you've been staying stuck is because you have this fear of being judged even though you're already being judged right where you're at. Judgment comes no matter what our size is. And so there's no place for shame in these 24 weeks. And shame, hear me, shame leads to self-sabotage. Any of you ever self-sabotage before? You're doing really good. And then all of a sudden, like you're on the road and then your car just goes, Wah! and you go right in the ditch and you're like, what the heck? I was doing so good. You get on a path, you start seeing results. Self-sabotage is a real thing. And most of us have dealt with that, especially with our weight for a long time. We see a little bit of success and then we get off track. So shame leads to self-sabotage, which leads to frustration, which eventually leads to quitting and staying stuck and being on this hamster wheel of weight loss. So shame's got to go. Who cares? Who knows what your starting weight is? Who the flip cares? And if someone has an opinion on the size on the back of your pants or the number on a scale, it 
In case you didn't watch Friends, that means F you. <laughs> you can't live for other people's opinions. Most of us run around the most of us run around doing so much for everybody else. We give to here, we give there, we give here. We spend all of our time giving to everybody else. And then we take what's left. This year is the year that you make you and your health a priority. Also this week on Prep Week, photos and measurements. One, I don't have very many regrets from my weight loss journey. There's only a couple. But one of my regrets is that I did not take enough photos and videos of where I was at. I didn't want to take them. I didn't want to see them. I didn't want anybody else to see them. I was so ashamed. I didn't take a lot of photos. I just didn't. And if I could go back in time, if me and, you know, if I could get in the time machine, if I could get in the DeLorean and go back, I would take more. Because this journey for some of you, some of you, this is just going to get you to a goal. But for some of you, what's on the other side of this? It's gonna blow your freaking mind. I had no idea the doors that were gonna open and be attached to me getting my health under control. And one of those opportunities that I had, one of those things I was able to do was, I'm just gonna show you the, whoop, the amount. Can you guys see that amount? It's $100,000, okay? Now, I don't know if anybody on here could use an extra $100,000 for getting in the best shape of your life, but that's what I got paid. I actually got paid $106,000 from these buddy. A hundred, that's not a promotional amount. I actually was handed checks for $106,000 that went into my bank account, basically for them to be able to use my photos in before and after. A hundred and six thousand extra dollars. <laughs> Kristen went, I know Kristen. $106,000 for getting in the best shape of your freaking life. Like, yeah, exactly. So for some of you, this is gonna be an option. I just had three people enter the Beach Body Challenge this last week. We got several more that are on track to do it, enter next year. So my point is every year, a man and a woman get awarded $100,000 as the best transformation of the year. And Beach Body uses those in their photos in their whatever. Some of you are gonna have that opportunity. So we are gonna dock, you never know what those photos are gonna be used for or where you can use those photos in life or where this is gonna lead you to and where you might be able to use those photos. You will never regret having them. So we're gonna document everything. And our eyeballs get used to seeing us every day. It's when you look back at photos of where you started and where you're at that you can actually see your progress. You're gonna go grocery shopping and set up for success. Listen, most people don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. Here, um, finishing up my shopping and here's my shopping cart. Let's see, I have some of the coconut milk <clears throat> and avocado oil, some chicken broth that's unsalted, that's, um, eggplant, eggs, and I like the Walmart that's box eggs, by the way. Okay, Jen Rancher, this is my shopping cart. I've got all the goodness. Black bean burgers, my, veg, my fruits right there, my 
my carbs for my yellow containers, rolled oats, tortillas, got some onions, avocado, um, blazing buffalo chicken breast, my breads, my veggies. Okay, so here we are at the grocery store. We're trying to figure out, um, according to our handy dandy list, what we're gonna have. All right, boys, so we need, let's conquer our green column. I would like cucumbers and some spinach. What do you wanna try, Declan? Uh, green pepper. Uh, let me check the list. Green pepper. Yep, okay, grab yourself a green pepper. Hey, Mom. What? Yeah. Go ahead. What? What would you like to try? What do you got there? Corn. Oh, corn on the cob. Hold on, let's check the list. Uh, corn on the cob is not in the green column. Oh wait, it's in the yellow, it's a yellow container. Okay, so it's in the yellow column. Go ahead, you can get it. We just gotta count it correctly. What else, what else, what other vegetables do we want, guys? We need more vegetables, lots of vegetables. What else can we try? Habaneros. Yes. Um, that's are hot. What do you think, Weston? Spinach. You want spinach? Yes. You want to make a salad? Yes. Okay. Oh, we're going for the celery. Okay. Celery it is. This is my let's go face and my nervous face, but we got this. Ready? All the produce. Cleaning out the junk. All of it. You know, all the holiday food that's hanging around, the M&Ms, the Reese's peanut butter cups, the chocolate Santas, the, the chocolate chips that are in your pantry. Because I know for some of y'all, when you clean out the junk, chocolate chips look real appetizing. <laughs> If you have something in your house that's a problem, it needs to go. Okay, go. Go. All right, Carmen, time to clean it out. Brett does not tempt me at all. So that can stay for the kids. Paintbrush. <laughs> Cookies need to go. Pop tarts. Unlike you, Carmen, peanut butter is disgusting, so that can stay for my kid. Those can go. Now these. Aaron's doing me a favor and taking out all the garbage that I pulled out of the pantry. Thanks, babe. Okay, so I got all my new groceries home and I thought, you know what? I might as well just clear out the fridge and we start over right now. Let's get out the bad stuff before we put the new stuff in. Okay, this is so embarrassing. we even ate that bad and when I took everything out of the fridge it shouldn't be in there look you guys look at how empty my refrigerator is so pickled eggs cottage cheese on top there I have uh some riced cauliflower and feta and egg whites some jerky and then some a little bit of booze that isn't mine it's a friend of mine left it here so she's got to come get it I just messaged her and do you see that there's hint water and the door was jam-packed full this is so sad so look at this pile of crap this is all no-no all of it and a weird amount of booze that needs to go bye bye and cheese it's there's just a few left but they gotta go uh rice like bad rice we would put butter and sugar and 
cinnamon on that. Here was my attempt at eating good. I had some plain Greek yogurt in there, but um, I just, the reason it's in the bad pile that's going in the garbage is uh, the expiration date is November of 21. <laughs> Nothing like giving yourself a little diarrhea. Tons of cream cheese. Look at these cream cheese spreads. I got brown sugar. I got blueberry. I got strawberry. I got just white bagels. All kinds of little sugary yogurts. Oh, yeah. And I know exactly what I used this for. Caramel dip. Bye-bye, caramel dip. I'm going to miss you. There was two of these open in the door. Yum yum sauce? Tell me you don't love yum yum sauce. You're not good for me. Go away. Wait, just a little bit longer. Okay. 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 I'm over it. Okay. Bye wine. Bye peanut butter whiskey. <gasps> Have you ever had this? Rum chata limon? Oh, it's so good. Okay, no, I don't need it. Homemade mac and cheese, sour cream. Okay, bye, bye. See you, all of it. Most people never plan to fail, but they do fail to plan. Preparation isn't half the battle. It is the whole battle. If you get to Monday, this is what most people do. They get around, they, they, they set a goal, they fly by the seat of their pants, they don't plan, they don't, set themselves up to, they don't set themselves up to succeed and they wind up failing and they don't know why. When you plan and you prepare, you are literally setting yourself up to succeed. You are setting your intention that I'm going to succeed. You are preparing for success. And that in which you prepare for, you will have. That in which you don't prepare for, you will not have. So if you don't prepare, do you see the disconnect? People don't prepare for success. And then they wonder why they don't have success. And then they get frustrated that they don't have success. And then they go jump to do something else. And then they do the same thing there. Because again, preparation isn't half the battle. It is the freaking battle. Do this like it's your job. Treat this like your life depends on it. What would happen if you chose to gamble and actually go all in? Actually give this 110%. What would happen? Where would you be? Where would your health be one year from now? What would your butt look like one year from now? Freaking awesome. That's what it looked like if you actually decided to go all in. Not half in, not 50% in, 50% out, not 70% in, 30% out. I'm talking 100% all in. Take quitting off the table. Knowing the journey's not gonna be perfect, but knowing come hell or high water, you're doing this sucker. And that this year, in 2022, Failure for you in this area of weight loss and health is not an option.